Okay, everyone. I have to admit that I was wrong. I found the separate power transistor, which works to provide power supply 12 volts uh, for the both real motor and capstan motor, and it's Q401. As you may see, it's uh, 16 volts, which comes from the power supply on the main board, and this transistor produced 12.4 volts, which returns back and provides power supply for all motors. Uh, so here I see a plus 12 goes to VCC, and VCC is joined and connects to all motors. Capstan motor here, oh no, just for Capstan, and VCC works for also uh, rotation sensor. Okay, and the transistor Q509 was just uh, uh, short, shorting the second pin from Capstan motor to the ground to make it running. So what I technically did, I shorted collector and emitter on this transistor, and now motor is constantly running, and I will monitor the temperature. It looks to be pretty fine. No heat coming from radiators. So I hope it should be good, all right? Uh, and if you will take a look into the slide 23, on this board, so uh, for different versions, they even consider it to have G034, right? When this transistor is not in place, so it will short to the ground and motor will be running all the time, all right? So, but what I did, I just shorted these two pins on transistor, just not to remove the board and keep it right here so as you may see two weight pins are shorted on this large transistor right here okay now will be time to adjust speed and verify that everything works properly do a longer test and recap assemble and ship it back see you soon Okay, and remember what I told you before, the tape is running a little bit slow, and it's 2.985. All right, so it keeps pretty well and stable, but I need to adjust it a little bit. Okay, let me do it, see you in a moment. Okay, I'm adjusted with the port on here on the corner of the board and it now shows 2998 2999 which is very good speed and it's stable all right so good i may continue working on this deck see you soon and here, guys, the result of the measurement of the torque on take up really it's 41, 42 gram, and on the left it's 7. According to Nakamichi manual, between 6 and 10, it should be fine, and it's usually tuned to 6, so we have a pretty good balance here. All right. That's the new tape I told you about. I get and it works pretty fine. Okay. On both Akai and Sony decks, back tension did show me more than 10 grams. So that's probably a root cause of elevated uh, one flutter on Akai, so it's not. 0 0.02 as it could be, but it's still pretty good. Uh, now we measure the uh, re rewind, okay. It gets to 80 and fast forward, gets to 90, we don't read, okay, 90, 95, 85, 90, okay. We have a good torque for fast forward to rewind. 
Good. This part is done. Now I will listen the tape to make sure that I hear everything correct. See you soon. Okay, and now tape starts right away because uh, Capstan motor is rolling. So, and we right away have the proper speed. As you may see, there is no more this like two seconds ramp up on the speed. Good. Checking the opposite side. Checking. Yeah, I hear the difference. So Azimuth works perfectly well and it's full match in the middle. So good. So I believe that uh, I completed uh, changes needed for the tape transport with this. And now only the recapping and tuning left. See you soon. Hello again. And here we have a recapped deck. So with Nichicon solid polymer capacitors. So to remove the board, you have to uh, remove these knobs, uh, remove the nuts, and remove all three ports because they sit on the separate boards, uh, like this. And when you remove this, afterwards, remove the backboard, and you're good to remove this big board and work on it. All right, I see I just forget to attach the connector for the bias ports. Done. Okay. So, sorry, I have to work it out. All right, next step is tuning and assembling the top covers and panels. Um, I just can't stop listening so well it sounds like uh, the biggest difference that uh, even comparing with DR10 I have that with uh, solid polymer capacitors I can hear high frequencies much better. Like same as on Akai. Right? Uh, on well, well done Akai which has minimum capacitor, just like two capacitors on the playback pass. Um, I can hear highs really well. And after recapping, I have the same effect here. And at the same time, it goes very low on the uh, low frequencies. And bass is not overwhelming, it's, it just right there. So that's effect I already was demonstrating in my previous videos. That's uh, this effect is, is really cool when you just hear everything. And if you remember when I recapped Sony 505 ESJ with solid polymer caps, Dolby was not almost not possible to hear the Dolby presence. All right, so I will do tests on this deck. Uh, give me some time now, I will tune and then I will show you the final results after tuning. See you soon. Hey guys, uh, I played around and like uh, I figured out that during the recording bias was going through the playback camp, so I had to put back this metal piece we had <coughs> excuse me, before and install it on the stand and I zip tied it from both sides so it would not rotate. <coughs> and should be holding strong, really. I hope that uh, shipping would not drop it from the airplane and everything else it should survive pretty well. Okay, I just completed tuning. I will close it up and uh, we'll show you results on computer. Deck come up really, really well. <clears throat> it's records any tape type 
straight 221 kilogahertz v0 drop and 223 kilogahertz on minus 3 decibel level all right let me assemble it and let's measure together and here guys before closing the deck i decided to measure wow and flutter so we're currently running the test tape 3000 gears 0 0.03 to 0 0.04 very good results. Even for thank you tape transports, I'm impressed. Usually it's closer to 0 0.045 and it's a ratio 0 0.035. My pretty good results. Assembly. Okay guys, final results. Here I'm recording on type 1 tape and that's a uh, Recorded sound, white noise, that's the source, that's the recorded at minus 20, you see, to 20 kilohertz easily, at minus 10, again, almost to 20 kilohertz, minus 6, super results for type 1 tape, and 0 decibel. Wow, let's do frequency sweep. I don't believe it <laughs> to what I see. Uh, that shouldn't be so good. Really. Comes pretty close between left and right channels. That's a good. You see this two and a half decibel bump on 17 gears. That's all DR models have it. And then from 100 gears it goes very linear. Let's see, three, four, five, ten 10 kilohertz on type one. Then small drop to 16. Yeah. That's what I expected. And you see how linear with these capacitors it is. And interference goes after 20 kilohertz at 22 minimum. All right, now let's see minus 20. Pretty the same response repeats. Let's see how far it will go on type 1 tape. Twenty kilohertz, easy. Perfect results. Now select TDKSA and let's do the same. Let's see how it will change with this tape. Don't see this left channel, it's tape imperfections. It's been used again. Very well goes to 20 kilohertz. Good results. And now let's do Sony Metal XR tape. Uh, to tell the truth, when I was tuning this deck, I did very minor adjustments, less than half decibel. All right, and that's the Sony XR. Oh, 
Okay, perfect. 20 kilohertz. All right, we have good results. Now it's time to record music. All right, this would be a separate video. Uh, if I will have time tomorrow, I will do comparison video between DR10 and DR1 and just to better understand uh, the difference, how they sound. All right, thanks for time. This would be it for the second part. Deck is complete. I hope you enjoy it. So now let's see uh, white noise minus 10 and it's Dolby B. Let's reduce a little bit. Dolby C. Uh, I didn't get it. And minus 20. Something <laughs> weird is happening. Here, on zeros, Dolby B, there is no Dolby, it goes up to 16 kilohertz, minus 3 decibel, pretty nice results. Um, I'm not sure why Dolby shows like that, maybe because of, uh, with this 26 kilohertz, we have 19 kilohertz noise so probably frequency sweep should work better to on Dolby C and let's see frequency sweep what it will show us wow with this tape there is a good bump like four decibels at 17 gears it should be playing very nice bass and the R10 has a three decibel exactly at 17 kilohertz so they're pretty pretty the same you see 10 kilohertz 12 14 16 so there is no this drop it's it's really when uh, we put white noise it was uh, dolby blocking at 19 kilohertz and when we use just frequency sweep it goes pretty well to 20 kilohertz minus two and a half decibel wow very good results all right that would be it see you in the music part bye bye